Hey everybody, welcome to an episode of Microsoft Teams Room Licensing. Uh, my name's Jimmy Vaughn, this is Matt Slavka. We're gonna specifically be talking today about a Microsoft Teams Room and the license options. So there are a few choices for options for, uh, for the license for a Teams Room. Matt, let's talk about the two options that are available. Yeah, thanks Jimmy. So uh, really, there comes down to two options. There's Teams Rooms Pro and Teams Rooms Basic. Teams Rooms Basic is $0 per device per month. It is limited to 25 devices and 25 licenses within your organization's tenant. It includes one-touch join, easy wireless sharing, and a limited feature set of management and manageability capabilities for those devices. You can see online offline status. and But at the end of the day, your end users can use those rooms, join meetings, participate in meetings, and have fun functional devices. If you want to step up to Teams Rooms Pro, that adds an additional set of features and functionality. It includes expanded manageability. It also supports things like dual screen, interoperability scenarios, telephony dialing capabilities, as well as a ton of AI capabilities for those meeting spaces, both with Copilot and with other intelligent functionality that we've brought to Teams Rooms. Yeah, and I think it really comes down to what it says there. For small businesses, the basic license may be an option for some of your rooms, but when you're an enterprise and when you're really going through it, Teams Room Pro is the license that you want. Now, there are features that are specific to each one, and I think what we're really going to look at with this, uh, this slide view is really to sort of point out how many features are in that Pro license set today, which will be expanding, and how little are actually in the basic set. Absolutely, and I think this does a really good job of just showcasing that both can join meetings, both can have that limited feature set and capability to join a Teams meeting and to have that functionality there. But as you look at having dual screens, as you look at joining maybe cross-cloud meetings into other special clouds, or maybe you're looking for some of those AI intelligent capabilities that you'd expect from a Teams Rooms device and from a Microsoft Teams device, really the Pro license brings you all of that functionality. Yeah, and I think what you'll see in the release notes is that there are a lot of things that are marked as pro only when you go through. Now, we want to talk about a little bit about how you get your licenses. There is an ability inside of Teams Admin Center and the Pro Portal to add a basic license, but it's not there by default. So we do have to understand how to add this. And there is a whole video, Matt, on exactly how to add this. Exactly. The, the Teams Rooms basic licenses do have to be added into an organization's tenant. Uh, any M365 admin that has license administration capabilities can order the licenses and add them from M365 Admin Center, at which point they're displayed and available in Teams Admin Center as well as in the Pro Management Portal on devices that you've assigned those licenses to their accounts. Again, uh, Teams this, Rooms. This isn't a CSP that's actually loading this. This is the customer themselves inside of that tenant that's loading it. Correct. For Teams Rooms basic licenses, that needs to be added directly into the M365 tenant. Uh, the video there explains how to walk through that step by step. Yeah, and your Teams Room Pro licenses, those can be actually obtained through a CSP, but there are different types of licenses and you do need to make sure that you're getting the right one. So there is this Learn article out there that identifies all of the different license types that you can actually purchase and populate inside of your tenant as well. Correct. So Teams Rooms Pro licenses can be procured in all of the usual license procurement methods for Microsoft. So uh, whether you're an enterprise agreement, whether it's a cloud service provider, even just purchased locally from M365 Admin Center, all are entirely possible uh, just based on how your organization purchases those licenses today. Um, and then, as Jimmy mentioned, this document here outlines all of the different M365 licenses available. Teams Rooms Pro is one of many licenses available. Uh, and then there are different SKUs based on the use Case or based on the cloud uh, or the scenario that you might be deploying that license into, but there is only one specific license type that applies broadly. It is the Teams Rooms Pro license, and then there's just slight variations of it based on the tenant type. Yeah, we get sometimes questions from different educational providers and everything else. Is this the right license type? And this, this article outlines all of that. And there is this Learn article as well, outlining the important things of the Teams Room license. A shared device license is, will not work on a Teams Room. So a lot of that is inside of this Learn article about the do's and don'ts. 
Yeah, and I think folks tend to get that confused too. Uh, so Teams Panels, for instance, you can pair that with a Teams Room and a Teams Rooms Pro license. But if you want to just deploy a Teams Panel standalone, you can use a shared device license and deploy just the Teams Panel. You can't, however, deploy a Teams Room with a shared device license in a standalone fashion. That is either a Teams Rooms Basic or a Teams Rooms Pro license. This article here talks through all of that in quite a bit of detail as well. Yeah, so that's a good one. Let's talk a little bit about troubleshooting and some of the questions that we get. This is a big one, Matt, um, inside of the setup screen of the Teams room itself. It may say no license found. Yeah, so uh, we added this feature set of, on Teams Rooms Windows particularly. It is also available on Teams Rooms Android. Uh, it's a little more buried on the Android side, but uh, there is a display that will tell you what license type is assigned to the account that's signed into that device. Now, what I hear a lot from uh, customers, particularly when they're troubleshooting why a Teams Room isn't working, uh, they'll say, oh, well, it says, you know, room license. It says no room license found. And that could be accurate. If the device is successfully signed in, but there's no room license assigned to that account, the no room license found is a very fair display, and then you need to fix that licensing issue. But if you're seeing a sign-in error on the screen, so it says Teams Rooms can't sign in, we're also going to display that no room license found error message inside of settings because we're not signed in, we can't find the license. So it can sometimes be a red herring where folks kind of go down this path of, oh, the account isn't licensed, let me go fix that. In reality, the account is licensed successfully. The account just can't be signed into right now for one of very various reasons. Uh, and you're also seeing that error message displayed there. Yeah, and that's it for the Teams Room, Microsoft Teams Room licensing uh, dive that we went into. We want to thank everybody for their support and for continuing to deploy the best Microsoft Teams solution for shared spaces, Microsoft Teams Rooms. Make sure that you understand the license. Please expand and, and go through it. Matt, thank you for your time. Have a great day. Thanks, Jimmy.